After the Second World War, the economy of Germany was in shambles. The country was destroyed. The labor force significantly diminished. And the political and economic future of the country completely opened. Despite these unfavorable initial circumstances, Germany experienced a remarkable economic after-war boom, which led to rapidly rising living standards. How did a war-shattered Germany become one of the economic powerhouses in Europe in only 20 years? Ordo-liberalism and theoretical background for social market economy and ethical and intellectual foundations. The social market economy originates in Germany, specifically in the small town of Freiburg. During the 1930s, a group around the economist Walter Eucken and the lawyer Franz Bonn were discussing reforms to the capitalistic system. Having witnessed the Great Depression in 1929 and the rise of communism and fascism, they concluded that free markets left to their own devices could not sustain themselves. Instead, they looked for a third way between laissez-faire capitalism and centrally planned economies where prices would guide economic activity. But because the markets themselves have a tendency to become unstable, the state needs to set the constitutional boundaries within market transactions that take place. They envision a strong state that protects competition and price mechanism by shielding it from the anti-competitive attacks of cartels and monopolies. Because maintaining a competitive and democratic order is the primary task of the state. They call their theory Ordo-Liberalism. After the Second World War, the politician Ludwig Erhard implemented the social market economy in Germany, an economic system based on the ideas of the Ordo-Liberals that should ensure a more prosperous Germany. What Franz Born and Walter Eucken had envisioned in the 1930s now became a reality, a new liberal economic order. Pillars of the social market economy. But how does the social market economy work? We can think of the social market economy as a football game. Imagine the economy as a football match where the players are the companies and the state is the referee. The referee's job is to ensure a fair game. He monitors the game, enforces the rules and sanctions the rule breakers. But the referee does not just take the ball and tries to score on his own. Neither can he send off a player he simply does not like. He himself is bound to the constitutional rules that can be changed over time but not during a particular game. How the game is played out remains to the players. They are free to choose whatever tactic they see fit to win the game, as long as they are not violating the rules. Within a stable institutional environment, players can plan ahead and develop strategies to succeed at the game. This leads to competition among the teams and an overall better quality of the games. But there is no guarantee for success. The team bear the chances of winning or losing entirely on their own. In comparison to laissez-faire capitalism, businesses have no influence on the rules of the game and cannot work against the competitive order, for example, by forming cartels. In contrast to socialism, businesses can freely choose their own strategy they would like to pursue. The social market economy enables innovation by creating a stable institutional environment where actors can plan ahead and compete to find the best solution. Through the immediate feedback mechanism of the market, bad businesses go bankrupt while good businesses get rewarded for their innovation. The social market economy was the main reason for West Germany's rapid economic recovery after the Second World War.
while the East was enacting a centrally planned economy. The West relied on free prices to guide economic activity. The result was that by 1990, West Germany had almost four times the GDP per capita of East Germany. But not only the GDP in the West was higher, the social market economy also introduced a robust social safety system that ensured that the economic gains of free markets reached everybody, instead of being concentrated in the hands of a few. Family Business A crucial driver of Germany's economic recovery were family-owned businesses, which were often the most innovative companies. The great amount of family businesses in Germany is a great indicator that innovation, not status, matters in a social market economy. Because of the constant competitive pressure, large companies cannot resort to unfair practices, such as price-fixing to maintain their market position. Today, almost 90% of all owned businesses in Germany are family-owned. Some of them are international market leads that you probably never heard of, so-called hidden champions. These hidden champions are often among the most innovative companies. Social market economy in the 21st century But how can the social market economy help us to provide answers to the pressing problems of today? The social market economy highlights that the institutional framework determines how the game is played out. To tackle pressing problems like climate change and digital transformation, we need to adjust the institutional framework in such a way that businesses can compete with each other for the best solution. The social market economy sets the guardrails for innovation while it remains to the players to come up with detailed solutions. Within the social market economy, the rules of the game are not set in stone, but are subject to democratic debate. In fact, one of the greatest strengths of the social market economy is that it allows for changes to tackle upcoming challenges while maintaining important institutions such as price stability, rule of law and free markets. Protecting these institutions from demagogues can also be a vital antidote against populism. Thus, the social market economy is not a German oddity, but a universal theory of how to maintain prosperity in disorderly times. It enables peaceful cooperation and economic stability by providing a stable set of general rules for the benefit of everybody in society.